got a couple other videos of converter teardowns. This one's a turbo converter again. I'm going to show more focused on the TCC circuit. This is our clutch basket on the back. It's a big thick sturdy apply plate right there. clutches themselves. So they're single-sided. It's friction on those sides. They stack up against each other so the, the plate would be uh, they apply against each other like that. You've got two that spline to the inside of this basket and then two that spline in here. So when they locked up it makes a rigid connection from the input shaft into the trans. So this is the TCC apply piston, this big guy right here. There's no ring right here. Um, fluid gets charged through the input shaft in these spots right here. Fluid's allowed to go in, comes out there, and goes through. It's a little difficult to show. What I wanted to do is you can put shop air to it and get it to apply but there's not much to see since it's a closed basket. So it goes through here, seals there. It's got a sealing ring right there. That sealing ring sits in here. So the fluid pressure comes down, dumps into this cavity here. Let's see if we can get a... and then enters into the converter under the piston here and pushes up. So. When you've got pressure applied to it, clutches are engaging, they're grabbing. There is no mechanism <clears throat> on the back side of this to, or on, I guess you should say the front side of this, to push against, like to release. You just have the apply plate here and the snap ring. So to, when you um, release TCC, you have to bleed the pressure off, and then you lose the pressure from here from the TCC solenoid back into the main body. So you can see pressure plate in there. There's a big snap ring that goes there, but for uh, this, I'm not going to put it back together, but we can show you've got two of those uh, clutches, the internal splined ones with the tab sticking out. They spline right into that, onto the damper. So when TCC is not applied, they can spin interdependent. It's a little hard to do one handed and no fluid in there, but you can see that spins. So when you apply pressure through here, that makes it rigid, and then this whole unit will spin with the input shaft. So the input shaft splines here, makes the rigid connection when those clutches are tight, and that's what um, lockup is. So let's talk about. Um, low speed behavior, like when you're going through a parking lot or you're just starting to get going. Um, they can be a little jerky then. I've noticed that the cylinder deactivation cars or the non-turbo cars are a little jerkier than the turbo cars. Um, it's generally going to be because the size of the clutches inside the turbo cars are bigger and the damper is bigger so you're going to be able to absorb more of that, uh, that little jerk of when it's going into lockup. So what we're going to see, um, I'm just going to go really slow. I'm going to put it by the tack again to kind of show. You'll see the revs go up to about 1,000. Then you're going to see them bump down to about 800. And that's going to be around 5 miles an hour. And then they're going to start rising again. That's when lockup first happens. And then it's going to depend on how much pressure it gives after that by your accelerator position. So this is what that data looks like. Um, dark blue is TSS, which is uh, turbine speed sensor or the input shaft speed. Uh, torque control clutch pressure is the orange, and then light blue is engine RPM. So as we get going, um, you can see there's a pretty good disparity between the light and the dark blue. 
that represents about 300 or so RPM. And so as you see the orange ramp up to lock up, then you're going to see those start to come together. But what you're feeling is that um, trying to match the engine RPM and the TSS speed together. This is showing uh, the vehicle speed and then what the torque converter clutch pressure command was. So at about, you know, five and a half miles an hour, it's commanding 55 PSI to that clutch set to start locking up. And then as you go up in speed, you're going to see the ramp of that um, pressure increase until it gets to where it needs to be. So that leads us to the next part of what can, what you can feel is like a low speed jerk. So sometimes when you're coming to a stop, especially after you're just going a little bit back and forth, like in a parking garage or trying to find a spot to park, the converter may not unlock quick enough and you can feel that. Now that's a more abrupt jolt than when it goes into lockup. If you'll remember in the first part of the video, we talked about how there's not a return spring or an apparatus to push that clutch back. So there's a phenomenon when you're moving at low like low rotational speeds so low rpm that if you have a multi-plate clutch that's already been compressed it's already uh, yeah it's already been compressed it doesn't like to separate on its own so even though you've pulled the pressure back from the tcc solenoid those clutches are still going to be compressed to a certain point and so as you're coming to a stop if it doesn't, if it hasn't released fully, you're going to feel that jolt because you still have that rigid connection between the engine and the transmission itself. So it's akin to leaving a clutch in in a manual transmission. When you're low speed driving, you're going to get some jolts. You're going to get some, I would say, undesirable behavior. I tried to grab it, and I tried like eight times, and I couldn't get it to show up on video. I've experienced it in my car. I've experienced it in other Sky Actives. It doesn't happen all the time. But when you feel it, it's a, it can be a pretty substantial jolt compared to what you're used to. So this is a normal deceleration from about 13 miles an hour. You can see the uh, torque converter clutch pressure has been turned off. And then you see the input shaft speed uh, start to diverge from the engine RPM as I'm coming to a stop. So at the bottom, when input shaft is at zero, then that means I've come to a complete stop. My foot's on the brake. It's brought most of the internals to the transmission to a stop, but the engine is still able to turn. Now that's the function that makes an automatic um, able to come to a stop, like I should say a torque converted automatic to come to a stop without stalling the engine is because even though you've brought most of the transmission to a stop by applying the brake, when your converter is unlocked, it's allowing the engine to just spin. And so it's not dragging the engine down at that point really, but it's not stalling the engine. So if you come to a stop and your engine stalls, um, it's not uncommon for that to be a converter issue where either TCC is not releasing like it should or the one-way clutch inside the converter itself has failed. Um, we see that a lot on Dodges, really common on the diesels, not super common on most other vehicles, but it is something that can happen if you come to a stop, your engine dies, it could be a converter hanging on when it shouldn't. And then this is just showing the same function at about nine miles an hour is when it drops all the pressure off and then you're coming to a stop at the end. So another question that gets asked, does the converter unlock during a shift? Um, so to answer that, we'll look at a couple pictures here. So this, um, you can see the converter clutch pressure spikes up to about 60 pounds. And then you see it drop and then you see it come back up. So that's in the middle of a shift. So it spikes the pressure a little bit, pulls the pressure down to 45 during the shift was the lowest on that one. And then brings it up to about 52. So uh, some OEMs call this lock to lock shifting, um, direct shifting. It has a couple different names. So the converter does not fully unlock during the shifts. It does spike the pressure, pull the pressure back and then reapply pressure, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, try to achieve a full unlock during the shift. And that's what kind of, um, helps contribute to some of the quick shifts that these can do. Um, that in and of itself is another can of worms. The earlier ones did shift faster than the newer ones. That's a programming change. Only Mazda can answer, you know, specifically why they did that. The early um, Skyactiv shifted very quick. 
So this is a heavier acceleration on a two, three, four shift. Um, starts at 52 and a half pounds, ends at 145, we'll say, at, and when we shift into fourth gear, uh, the little dip as we're climbing in the middle is a shift into third. And again, it just releases and reapplies quick. Doesn't drop it down because you're under really heavy acceleration there. So you're at what max um, pressure command is going to look like through that shift based on what it feels it needs to um, hold everything together on those shifts. So this is a representative of a 10 minute video around town. It's lots of stop and go, um, just kind of doing a little things here and there. Um, if you do the math, we end up being about 94% of the time I'm in lockup. Green is torque converter clutch pressure, and then uh, orange is the vehicle speed. So like you can see here, again, pretty much almost all the time the vehicle's moving, we're in fun, some form of lockup, whether it's slipping or full or coast lockup. So I'm going to explain a scenario where the converter can stay unlocked um, to prevent a downshift. So some people... Um, think that the transmission slipping um, that's more of a side effect of the transmission almost always being locked up and so when the converter does unlock and you're doing some low speed stuff where you wouldn't uh, normally suspect the feeling you're getting and it feels more like a traditional automatic um, where it kind of has a slippy disconnected feel um, and they do that because you don't necessarily need the downshift. All you have to do is unlock the converter and then there's gonna be enough torque multiplication to keep you pulling through without a shift. Uh, so I'm gonna zoom in um, on the tack. We're gonna go in second gear. I'm gonna leave it in fully automatic. It'll, down, it'll hold it in second. Um, get a little bit of throttle, the converter will unlock. The revs will go up to about 2200 and then you're gonna see a dip and they're gonna pop back down to about two and then we're gonna keep going. When it pops back down to the two, that's when the car's decided you've had enough torque multiplication and it's going back into lockup again as you continue driving. So what that looks like here is you see the converter drops pressure again and then turbine and input speed start to diverge pretty wildly. So it lets the engine rev up um, quite a bit different from what uh, turbine slash input speed is. And that's just multiplying torque. And then it gets to the point where it's good to go. Then it starts applying pressure again. It does a little bit at first and then it ramps it up from there. So it's, um, tr it tries not to be too aggressive of an apply there while still maintaining uh, some torque multiplication while you're going in that low speed scenario where it doesn't necessarily think that you need to go down to first gear to make it happen. The last subject I want to talk about, um, we need to be at higher speed, you know, like 65 plus, so freeway stuff. Um, and it's a technique where you allow the converter to slip a little in sixth when you're climbing a hill. Because um, you don't necessarily need the downshift to fifth, you let the converter unlock, you let it start um, multiplying the torque, and you don't have to do a downshift. Um, that can look a little weird on the tack. You'll see like a couple hundred RPM fluctuations back and forth, so I'll show that. So this is what it looks like in data. Uh, you can see turbine and input speed here. Um, it's pretty steady. And then engine RPM raises and it lets it do that. It lets it slip, you know, a couple hundred RPMs through there because I'm going up a hill. I don't need a six, five downshift. It knows it can just unlock the converter, let it multiply some torque. I get towards the top of the hill, um, locks back up. And then there's a slight incline from there. So it lets it slip, you know, more like 50 to 80 RPM versus a few hundred because that's all it needs there. Um, this is a technique done by a lot of OEMs. They let the converter slip when you're in your overdrive gears versus a full downshift because it may not be needed. Um, it knows it can generate the torque because you're still in that lower torque multiplication range that the converter works at. And so you don't have to execute a full downshift um, in a scenario like this. There's a lot of variables that play into it, but that's, you know, the gist of it. Um, this video put together just based on some more questions that I've received off and on. If you guys have any more specifically about this, let me know. We can always make another video, you know, if it's something that I can give you the answer to or something I can spend time with. So let me know.